Awesome. And then I joined Valuetainment, mm-hmm. and that's another. So I'm building firewall after firewall in my real life. And tell me about Valuetainment, because I, I wanted you mentioned some of the celebrities you met recently, but talk about that company, what their mission is, and and why it's a, such a perfect fit for you. Well, first of all, Patrick Bet David started Valuetainment. He is this uh, business mogul entrepreneur, and he's Persian, and my dad is Persian too. He's multicultural. Uh, he, I watched him on a bunch of videos. I go, dude, I love what you're saying. He was interviewing celebrities. He had a great sense of humor. And at one point he goes, Donald Trump and Barack Obama, I will pay you each $1 million to a charity of your choice if you just come have a conversation with me for one hour. Mm-hmm. And n- neither one responded to him. <laughs> but that's when I realized that's the kind of guy I want to work for. Yeah, yeah. Because he isn't just trying to be divisive. He wants to have the full conversation. He'll still have his point of view. But we're not scared. That's the thing on the right. We want to have the crazy leftist talk and the drag queen, you know, spanking the Burbank mayor. We're going to have an opinion on it, but we're not going to say, you know, say this is how we like to live our life. No, we're going to make fun of it. They want to stop even the ability to have that platform. So uh, Valuetainment was so cool. They they invited me after four years of kind of back and forth Mm -hmm. saying, do we need a comedy division? I think we do. Yeah. They brought me in and now I'm making comedy sketches, a comedy talk show, which kind of rivals the daily show or the weekend update that Mm -hmm. SNL does. And we just pick up all the jokes they're refusing to do. And there's plenty of meat on that bone. Oh my gosh. (laughs) You may may never get any sleep (laughs) at this point, but uh, you also uh, told me you met Tom Brady and Mike Tyson, two superstars in their individual sports. Any interesting stories about those conversations or those meetings? Because I can't imagine meeting people like that. They're just so off the charts. Yes. Value team hires me and they go, your first day of work is at the vault, our big business conference. I go, what's that? I show up 3000 people spending anywhere from $10,000 all the way down to thousand dollars for a full weekend of just business, motivational speaking, skills, development, that kind of thing. And, uh, and the first day of work, there's Tom Brady <laughs> and uh, he's given a speech on how he became the most winning quarterback in football history. And then I get a text. You are one of the 85 people selected to meet Tom which I think they just threw me the bone because I just started Sure. because not everyone got this. And Tom has in his contract, only 85 people can say something to him and click the camera. And his agent is right there with the clicker. Click, <laughs> click, click, 85, we're done. So if you went cross-eyed or blinked, you don't get another picture. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> That's amazing. So the funny thing, I'm meeting Tom Brady. He's tall and I, he's wearing the same blue button down shirt I have. It looks similar at least. I go, Tom, are we wearing the same shirt? <laughs> this is what I use my talk. And he's like, I, I guess so. I go, that means you shop at H&M also. <laughs> and everyone laughed in the room. They go, that's it. That's enough talking. That was two. That was two. Get out of here. So that was cool. Then the next day of work, they bring in Mike Tyson to speak to the same group. And uh, I've met Mike Tyson before. And when I went to take a picture with him, I flexed my arm like a like a punch, like, like I'm a fighter too, which I'm not. Oh, my. And uh, – as soon as I put my arm near, he kind of has shifty eyes, so he doesn't quite trust. He grew up, you know, pretty rough life. And yeah, yeah. Now he's friendly. He's an indoor cat now, but he's still <laughs> got those. So I thought of a sketch, which we didn't film, but what if as I lifted my fist, the flash sent him back to like 1984 Oof. when his biggest highlight moments, and then he took a swing, you know? So <laughs> that would have been good if I got knocked out by Mike Tyson. I oh, my. That would have been something for the record books. But If you survive, and then the third you go day viral. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So in my stand-up act, I now ask men, hey, what would be the dollar amount that you would take one punch from Mike Tyson? Who would do it for 1000 10000 And you see some people going up to a million, and some people go, I nah, because I wouldn't live, so I don't want the punch. I can't even imagine a, a money, a monetary oh. amount. I can, can't even imagine being in front of one of those haymakers. That's unacceptable. No, no. I don't think our necks are built for it, Christian. That's right. You said Larry Elder was another person <laughs> but, uh, you met along the way? Well, yes. And then the third day of work, Larry Elder. Now, these are all people I've really watched, admired, or respected over the years. So that's how I knew I was at the right company. Mm-hmm. And Candace Owens came a week later, and you know the, the names go forever. So I'm just so happy to be here. Now that Valuetainment is filming my podcast, it's like I leveled up. The cameras are better. The sound is better. The production is better. So I hope people will check out my YouTube channel yeah, from absolutely. here on out. Absolutely. And before we let you go, you strike me as someone who is not only just very funny, but also ambitious. You've made this new entertainment uh, collaboration. What are you looking for is, you know, maybe even just thinking about 2024, uh, expanding your empire. What's what's on tap for you or what can you tease about what you've got planned? Well, we want to do lots of sketches that are like topical. We want to do the podcast, keep it going, build it up. I have 430,000 subscribers on YouTube. We want to have a million by this time next year because everyone's going to be talking about the topics. This is not the season. We're getting ahead of the ball. And then I want to do man on the street. 
I'm going to call it cave on the street. <laughs> and we're going to go around and ask people t- questions anywhere from serious to silly about, you know, who you're voting for. Can you spell Kamala? You know, <laughs> can you describe John Fetterman? Whatever it is. And we're going to get some real reactions from real people so that everyone can be a part of what we're doing. I love it. And I love the fact you're willing to cross over the aisle, entertain everyone and have those conversations. I think more and more people like that.